The other day I was uh, looking at Christmas ornaments and I happened along a little knit Christmas sweater with a little paper clip hanger on it. And I thought, that's a cool little project. A little, little knit sweater to hang on your tree. And then I said, I don't know how to knit, but I, I can carve. So I just turned the, uh, the knit Christmas sweater into a carved Christmas sweater. And uh, yeah, I had a lot of fun with it. I've done a few here, but... I started out thinking I was going to go for the super ugly Christmas sweater, and uh, it just didn't happen that way. So let me show you what I've done here, and uh, we'll uh, we'll make one. But from there, I mean, this is the most customizable project yet because make it your own sweater size, everything. But uh, let me show you what I did here. I got one here with a little uh, little snowman, and again with the I made a little wire wire hanger for it. Which I thought was kind of fun. And then I went from the snowman. I ended up going to the old Christmas tree. Now notice this guy. This sweater's got straight arms on it. Alright. And then. <laughs> I did a little one for the girls. A little v-neck. With the, the hanger again. But with some holly berry. Holly. Holly berries. Holly berry. Holly berry. Okay. Anyway. With a little v-neck there. And I thought, well, I wonder if there's an easier way we can do this. So I made this one with the Christmas balls. See that? And then uh, I just used a little little eye screw on the top with a little regular Christmas Christmas ball hanger. All right. So that's the idea. I'm going to take you through one. And like I said, size does not matter. Shape, you can do, like I said, the straight arms, the arms down thicknesses of wood I'm using uh, bass wood again I've got uh, well this piece here is like three-eighths of an inch thick this one's here is more than half so like I said you can go three-quarter it doesn't matter uh, use what you got pine would work good in this case too but let's just uh, I'm gonna take you through one and uh, from there the sky's the limit and you can make your own what we're gonna do here is let's take a piece of paper here this piece here is three inches by four inches and I'm just going to fold it over in half, all right? That's Finnegan breathing in the background, not me. <laughs> not me like normal. But uh, we're just going to draw on our sweater. So if we do this, uh, we're going to take a little little half, half neck here. All right? And we'll just kind of come down like so. Come on, marker. Something like that, all right? Let's take your scissors. This isn't rocket science. This is grade one art class. All right, and there you go. There's your sweater template. If you want to do a straight one, a straight arm, same idea. Just do a straight arm, all right? Grain orientation is what we're going to talk about here, and that is, does it make a difference if you use your grain either way? So we got one going this way vertically, one horizontally, and I've done it both ways, and uh, I can't tell. I'm sure there's pluses and, and minuses to each, to each way, but I mean, it's pretty basic carving, so I don't think you have to worry too much about the grain. Now, because uh, this is such a basic shape, and we're going to be carving it, it doesn't matter if you use a coping saw, even to get it close, you can use a hand saw, jigsaw, band saw, or scroll saw, and no matter. All right, so there you have it, just uh, quick and dirty. Like I said, it doesn't matter if it's close, it's going to be... Uh, You'll see when we carve it, but we're going to rough the edges and round them and whatnot anyway. So close is good. All right. So got my little Helby uh, inch and three quarter knife here. Now what we're going to do right off the bat is uh, just take some, take some edges off. Always be cognizant of the grain direction that you don't just break off the... Uh, 
fibers and start pulling. And as you can see, this is going to go around. So the same with every carving. We'd want all these uh, saw marks taken off too. Now, depending on your wood too, you may want to put facets all over the, uh, the sweater. I like that. You can see like uh, kind of recarve the whole face. But for now, we'll just focus on one side of this so we don't make the longest video in the history of the world for making a Christmas sweater. <laughs> we come up here, you can see, watch this cut here. I'm going to bring that up like that. And then I'm going to come a little bit past. Same with this. And it's just going to give that wrinkle up a little bit farther. Right. See, we brought that up. Same on this side. Just going to bring that right up. All right. And rounding, smooth it out. We just want to take all of those faces off, just with a knife. And if you want to get a little, let's see, watch this here. You can go a little bit deeper and then pull it out, making sure you always mining that green. Little dips and divots and whatnot. See that if I if I go to follow through with that cut, I'm going to pull it right off again. I go the opposite way, clean that up. All right. But let's think about what we want to put on the uh, the front of the, the sweater here while we do that. And I think one of the easiest ones is maybe this uh, this tree. Let's just take a pencil here and draw a happy little tree, is what they say. <laughs> I'm going to take my knife, maybe a little bit of an angle out, just draw all the lines down. Same on this side. Come across. A little stump. I'm really just uh, cutting straight in. We'll come back. We're just going to make a bunch of little chip cuts. All the bottoms here are the bows. All right. Then we're just going to come up, take out these little corners. Like so. pop out already. A stubborn chip. Okay. Alright. I'll come across the bottom first before we cut the stump. Just taking wood away. Make it look like that tree is just sticking out on its own. Not a hole in the middle of the sweater. Right. Okay. 
Now this is obviously the vertical grain. This part would be easier if it was a horizontal grain, but it wouldn't be as easy as cutting the tree out. So plus and minus is the both ways. Where's my brush? My brush. Come up, get that stump out of it. There we go. It's fun carving on camera, you feel rushed. Now, like I said, we can go around and uh, remove a lot of these uh, saw marks. But again, if you've got a little a little chisel, a little palm tool or anything, you can just kind of run it around too. Give it some texture. All right. Come across into that. That's a lot nicer, but you can definitely do it with a knife. This is a D512, little mid-sized file tool. But don't be afraid. Don't let tools hinder you. Tools don't really matter. You can use a knife, any kind of a gouge. Like even uh, if you got a bigger gouge, let's say uh, number number eight here. Like it's fine. It looks good too, actually. Come right around the sides with the thing and make a little a little swale on the side. Just take some. Some wrinkles out, right? My finger out of the way. Place up the back side. Right, maybe we should give it a color. Do we want to give it a color? Right, we can do that. We want to give it a little color. If you wanted to, uh, if you want to add to it too, you could put little cuts like this all the way around. All right. Like I said, you can do whatever you want. Sky is the limit. You can decorate it anywhere you want. I like this uh, this one here. I did like a turtleneck. I gave like little cuffs, rolled cuffs. It's kind of fun. V-neck, obviously. You know, oh, that's what I was talking about right here. You can put these little little cuts in the top here. So. But for now, let me uh, let me just finish this one up, and then we'll uh, give it a real quick paint. All right, good enough for demonstration purposes. <laughs> Here is our sweater. What I'd like to do is, uh, you can do whatever you like. This is not a necessary step at all, but I always uh, coat the uh, project with linseed oil before I paint. You can seal it first with uh, any kind of a spray or other kind of oil too. It just gives a more even uh, paint job, but again, no no foul in painting it straight on the wood either all right so i do love the way that it makes it pop doesn't it look sharp 
I'm going to uh, paint this with linseed oil and just uh, pat it off and then we'll uh, come back and paint the tree. All right. Now, when I paint, I like to take uh, whatever color I'm using, put one, one drop of paint in there. I got a little dropper here and I like to just give it some water. I used to always say like one drop to eight, one drop of paint to eight drops of uh, water, but uh, I don't even pay any attention to it anymore. I just give it some water. All right. So since we're going to, uh, Oh, what am I saying? Since we're going to be putting Christmas light dots on the tree, I'm going to paint the tree first, and then I can uh, it can dry a little bit while I paint the sweater. It's a very uh, very subtle. You can mix it as strong or as weak as you want, but we'll make do with this. All right, we won't dilly dally with this too long, but. There's our tree. Same idea for the, whoa, too much paint. Just going to say, same idea for the, the red. But I should have just dabbed it out. All right, mixing her up. And we'll just paint the whole little sweater. Alright. Just like so. And we're just painting the old stump brown here. And then I've dug out all of my uh, fun colors here. And we're just going to go ahead and uh, use our little stylus. Put some Christmas lights on this thing. Probably enough for yellow. Let's go pink. Now, I didn't say again, but every time I use that linseed oil, I have to put in my disclaimer that uh, if not cared for properly, it can self-combust. So be aware or use a different oil or spray or nothing. Yeah, we're just trying to be random. Sometimes it's harder to try and be random than try and be uniform. <laughs> All right. Another idea too is to uh, dig out a wood burner and you could burn your images onto the uh, this, this sweater. This is a crazy colors. What did I use in the last one? Blues. This is like a candy. <laughs> candy tree. Really bright. Let's just stop it right there.
<laughs> They're goofy, goofy light colors. But anyway, there we go. You see how that texture just really highlights the uh, carving. But backside, no matter, is what it is, right? Well, this is what you're going to be looking at. So now we have to decide what we're going to do to hang it. I just want to say, you can use whatever kind of finish you want. I like uh, Clapman's Beeswax Sellable Finish. They also make another uh, beeswax polish. You can spray it. You can put uh, polyurethane on it. You can antique it. You can oil it again. You can do whatever you like to preserve it. But we're not going to worry about that on this one. We're just going to worry about the hanger. A couple different ways to hang these guys, like I showed you. We've got the, uh, the hanger, the clothes hanger, which is uh, my favorite. But to make it even easier though, we can just take uh, these little little eye hooks with uh, the thing. So this is pretty straightforward. Just take your uh, your little Christmas hook package that you bought and you got 18,000 of them in there. Okay. And the same with uh, the eye hooks. I've got this little uh, container of all different colors, but that's a little eye hook. Now these are pretty tiny. If I was to buy them again, I would get a hair bigger. But when I, when these run out, I'm going to get a hair bigger. I've only got uh, 972 left. So <laughs> let's go down to the workshop and uh, make up a little make up a little hanger. Let's put a little dot here on each side, and we're going to end up drilling a hole where those dots are. Now the hole depends on the size of wire you use. This is just utility grade uh, hardware store wire, okay? And uh, I'm just going to take pliers here. I'm going to take a couple pieces of it off. I've seen this, like I said in the beginning, I've seen it done with the, uh, a paper clip, so obviously that's going to be a lot finer. But this is fairly heavy duty, so I want to find a drill bit to, to match the wire. Then I'm just going to go ahead and drill it in. Doesn't have to go super deep. All right, we've got two holes. Now let's take our two pieces of wire and uh, head over to the vise. So I'm just going to take these uh, two pieces of wire here, and I'm just going to put them in about uh, about an inch into my vise. You can do this with a double pair of vise grips, whatever. But I'm just going to fold them over. Give them a little bend, all right, like so. See a little, little kink on there. And now I'm going to uh, put it back in the vise, like so. All right, tighten it up. And take my, uh, my pliers. I'm just gonna do three, three winds. Give or take a wind, nice and tight too. If uh, if you find that you, when you take it out of the vise that it comes apart, you didn't do it right. <laughs> so it shouldn't be sloppy. You want some strength to it right out. So I've done it quickly before and it just slides out. So take your little nippers, nip the uh, the extra piece off. Crimp it down. And then we'll just start to shh, shh, shh. <laughs> All right. Then we're just going to make a hanger. Bend it, uh, bend it one way. And then start making your, your little ring. All right. Something like that. You can't see. Can you see? Can you see? Can you see? There. Alright. Now, this is definitely going to be too long in the bottom, but it depends how far you drilled your hole. But it's going to take some monkeying to fit them. Got my sweater. And I'm just going to put one side in. And this, like I said, this takes some. Uh, some fiddle work, a little bit of bending of your wire, but you'll get it back again after. Get it down in there. 
Oh my goodness. You have to go away. All right. And that's basically your uh, your hanger. All right. Well, I think we've reached the end of our, uh, our little uh, Christmas sweater. Like I said in the very beginning, this is just to uh, give you a rough idea of what, uh, what you can do. But from here on out, the sky is the limit. And you can make whatever you like, whether you burn it, just paint it, carve it, anything. But uh, that was a fun little, uh, a fun little project to uh, to do for the beginner. It's a nice little thing to give away to your your loved ones or friends. And uh, yeah, that's it. So again, I want to thank all those who uh, bought me coffee this week. It was uh, much appreciated. It's pretty cool when uh, I get a little notification that someone bought me a coffee. So I just want to say thanks for that. And uh, until the next video, I will uh, see you later. See you guys.